So congratulations if you ended up buying and purchasing a Google Pixel 7a. This is a very good phone and I think it's going to last you for quite a bit of time. So I'll give you a quick introduction and a quick walkthrough on exactly how to use this phone. It's nothing crazy if you used any other Android phone or any phone before, you should know how to use this one to be honest. But let's go and break down at least on the exterior first. So on the front of the Pixel 7a, you're getting a very good display. It's 1080p, 6.1 inch display, it's an OLED display as well. So it's going to look very good for a majority of people out there. You're getting a little bit of a tiny bit of bezel. The front camera is right here. The left side of the phone doesn't really have anything, just like your antenna band. You are getting your SIM card eject area, which we'll talk about in a second. On the top of the phone, there's just a microphone. On the bottom of the phone, you do have your charging port. So this is where you would go ahead and plug in your phone to charge, but it also supports wireless charging on the back, which is very nice. On the right side of the phone, we are getting our volume buttons and we're getting our power button. So right here, if you wanted to turn up and down the volume or silence a call or silence notifications, you can click the volume up or volume down button. You can also go and click on the power button as well to turn your phone on and turn your phone off. You're getting some more antenna bands on the bottom, just another antenna band. And on the back, you're getting your plastic back, which still feels very nice. It doesn't really feel that cheap. You're getting your dual camera set up up here, a wide and ultra wide camera. Like I said, it does support wireless charging, which is very nice. You're getting your flash up here. And that's kind of it on the outside. Pretty basic stuff. Now, I did talk about that SIM card eject area, so let me go and hit on that a little bit further. So in the box of your phone, you should be able to see that you do have a little SIM card eject tool. Now, if you have an eSIM, you don't have to do this. You can just you know, basically scan that eSIM. Or if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can skip this part of the video. But if you want to input your SIM card right now, what you can do is grab that little needle, the little like SIM card eject tool that's inside of your box, you can go and input that right on the hole right there, right next to basically where this area is on your phone. Go ahead and basically slide this in right there. You'll basically be able to hear a little like click. And from here, you can go and basically pull this little SIM card tray out. And you can go and put in your SIM card as you normally would right there. And from there, once it's in, you can go and slide it back in. And then once it's slid in perfectly fine, you'll actually see that the phone should be able to discover your SIM card. And you should be able to actually use your SIM card within your phone. Now, if you don't have a SIM card, if you don't want to use it now, that's totally up to you. But you also have to keep in mind that I've already went through the initial setup of the phone. So this is basically what it'll look like after you set up your phone. It's just a bunch of personal information, how you want to set up your phone. It's completely up to you. So for me, I've already kind of went through that process. Now, this is your lock screen of your Pixel 7a. Every Android phone is basically going to look like this. So at the very top, you're going to have your SIM card you know, status. If you have a T-Mobile, Verizon, whatever it is, it's going to show you up here. You have your Wi-Fi, battery icons up here. You'll have your little hole punch display that's always going to be there. That's never going to go away. That's just your front camera. You'll see your time, date, and weather in your area as well, which is really nice. And then you'll see a bunch of notifications. So if you have notifications, text calls, you know, video calls, WhatsApp messages, whatever, all that stuff is going to come up right here. So you'll just see a massive list of notifications. You can always swipe them out if you want to by swiping to the side. You should also be able to hold them down and gain more information from these notifications as well. But regardless, that's a little bit of a breakdown there. Now, if you want to, if you already have a password and everything set up, you can go and either put in your fingerprint sensor, you can swipe up to type in your PIN. In this case, I've already went through it and I don't have any of those things. So we can just swipe up. Now, this is our home screen. Our home screen is basically going to always be the same way. We can change a lot of things here, but if you swipe up, it's always going to take you home for the most part. Now, very similar to, like I said in the beginning, at the top, the information kind of stays the same. You still have your battery and Wi-Fi icon up here, but you'll see the time has now gone up here. You can also go ahead and see that basically, if you swipe down from the top, you'll come into a different panel. So I'll show you again, if you swipe down from the top, this is your status bar or your little like control center panel area. So here you'll see the same notifications that you have. So as you're getting more texts and messages and calls, you'll basically be able to see all those notifications here. You can swipe through them, like I said right here. You can also swipe some of them, I guess some of them you can't. You'll also have quick toggles. So you can go and access your internet toggles or your do not disturb toggles and all these other informations here too, which is really cool. You can also swipe down if you want to. So just like how I did it, you can swipe down just like this. And you'll see your brightness toggle here. You'll see a lot more information right up here. And you can go ahead and even swipe in between your toggles and you can add or dismiss other toggles that you want to right here as well. Now at the very bottom, you'll see two different icons, the settings icon, which we'll talk about later, and that you know power icon. So if you wanna quickly restart your phone, 
you can go and click there and you can power off your phone and restart your phone or what you can also do is hold down or click on the power button and the volume up button at the same time and you should be able to get into that same panel and you can go and power off your phone as well. Now like I said your home screen pretty much stays consistent but you can always change up whatever you want to. So you'll have widgets and different things, you'll have the Google search bar down here if you want to quickly search for things on Google. You'll have your little you know, widgets up here so you can always add widgets by holding down on an empty area of the screen. And you'll see that you can change your wallpaper, you can you know, add a widget if you want to, you can change your home screen settings. So under widgets, you can just go ahead and grab another widget if you want to. There's lots of different ones available. In this case, we'll just kind of skip it, but you have the ability of doing that. Swiping back up, you can hold down once more, and you can go and get into home settings. And you can change ex pretty much a lot of different things within your home screen panel. That's another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing. Swiping up, you'll also see that you have your app icons. You can move them around by holding one down and you can move it around wherever you want to. You can move it to a different page if you want to by swiping over to the side, or you can just leave it exactly where it is, just like how I like doing it. But then you might see that, well, I don't even see all of my applications, I just see a few of them. You might even say, I don't have, I don't see all my applications, I just see a few of them. Well, what you can do here is you can swipe up from the bottom and you'll get into your application drawer. This is where all your applications are on your phone. And this is a very, very important area because this is where you're going to see all the apps that are within your device. So what you can do here is you can basically just scroll through and you'll basically be able to find all the different applications that you have. You can also click on the search bar up there if you want to just search for applications you have on your phone. There's lots of stock ones built in like the Google Drive one, Clock, Settings, but there's also other ones that you can download. But you might be wondering how you can download those applications. Well, beyond the basic applications that you always have, like phone call if you want to make phone calls, or messages if you want to Google message people or text message people, whatever, you'll also have the Google Play Store. So if you go and click on the Google Play Store, this is where you can download all your applications from. So what you want to do here is you can go and come into this application, and you want to go and click on the search bar that's right up there. Now when you're in here, what you can do is you can search for an application. So if you want, if you wanted to download the Snapchat application, you can go and start typing in Snapchat as I normally would just like so. You can find it just like this and you can go ahead and install this application. Very basic, it doesn't really take too much time. And you can install this app and that's pretty much all you're going to have to do. It's very basic and this is pretty much one of the advantages that you have is you can just download these apps and pretty much move on from there. Now another big thing is basically once these applications are downloaded, well if you wanna find them, like I said, you can swipe up, you can find them here or you can basically find them here and you can click on them to basically open them. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is gestures. Gestures is basically how you use your Android phone. So I haven't really shown anything super crazy here yet, but if, you have, if I were to go into my you know, application like you know, Google Chrome, well then how do I go back home? Well, you can do that by you know, seeing this bar down here. You can basically swipe up like this and you'll basically come back home. So wherever you are, no matter what application you're in, if you swipe up from the bottom, you'll basically always come back home, which is so important. Now, if you want to go back into an application, like let's say you're here and you want to go back into the previous page, sometimes you can grab that little side of that panel like this and you can go back. Sometimes there's an arrow too, you can just go back. But if you don't want to do that, you can also just swipe back like this. If you want to go in between two different applications you have open, you can actually just swipe in between them just like this. So you can just grab a panel like this and kind of swing in between so you don't have to go looking for them. Or if you want to get into your multitasking panel, you can swipe up, stop right there, and you can basically see all the applications that you have. That's another really cool thing that you have on your Android phone. Now swiping back up, I wanna show one last application, which is our settings application. So swiping up right here, what we can do is we can go ahead and basically swipe down and we'll basically see our little settings icon right there. So what we can do is we can click on settings and this application is going to house a bunch of different things. So for one, all I'm going to show you right now is basically if you wanna like if you have a question about something in particular, you can go and click on search settings and you can basically search for something within your settings. So if you're searching for Wi-Fi, or if you're searching for internet or Bluetooth or whatever it is, you can basically search for it up here and you'll basically be able to find that specific information right within this panel. Now, if you don't wanna search for something, you can always just go inside of your application, just kind of scroll through your battery, storage, display options, accessibility options, you know, so many things. But at the very bottom, you have this little system toggle. Well, what you can do here is you can go and click on system and it'll come into this panel. Now you'll see a few different things. You'll see gestures and so many other things that come up. 
But right here, you'll see system update. What I would recommend doing is clicking on system update as soon as you get your Google Pixel 7a. And all I would recommend doing is just going through and installing the updates that you have. You would not believe how important it is to install some of these updates. So just go through, install these you know, Android updates for the most part. And that's a big thing you can do as well. So that is basically a quick introduction on how to use your Pixel 7a. Nothing crazy. It's pretty basic for the most part. But if you have any thoughts or questions, you can always let me know in the comment section below. And someone should be able to help you. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments as well. Hit the like button. That would mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. So then.